I recently posted a video about using an electronic barometer to compensate for variations in the boiling point of water that occur with changing atmospheric pressure. There is another way of doing that which is in some ways more elegant, but proved less satisfactory with the limited resolution of the DSB-18 temperature sensors that I'm using. The flash boiler steam generator that I use produces steam that's slightly superheated, but by the time it gets to the inlet to the distillation column it is at the boiling point of water. You can tell this because of beads of condensation that are visible on the inside of the silicon tube conveying the steam. That means that you can insert a small piece of copper tubing which is thermally connected to a temperature sensor close to the inlet to the column with a short piece of silicon tubing between that and the column so that its temperature is not altered by conductivity from the slightly lower temperature of the bottom of the column. So in this setup temperature A represents the boiling point of water at atmospheric pressure. Even better at the current pressure inside the bottom of the column which is slightly above atmospheric. Temperature B is the boiling point of the column bottoms, which will be slightly lower by an amount dependent on its alcohol content. Now all you need to do is fix the target temperature B a small amount below temperature A and atmospheric pressure compensation is automatically achieved. I have tried this and it works but it gives a significantly less stable control parameter than a single temperature sensor compensated by atmospheric pressure measurement. That is because of the demands that this system places on the precision of thermometers. The temperature difference that we're targeting is a fraction of a degree. I've been using 0 0.3 degrees Celsius. These DSB-18 temperature sensors have a resolution of a sixteenth of a degree. That means that our temperature range of interest is only covered by five or six separate values given by the sensor, or in technical terms, five or six counts. Electronic systems like this are subject to random noise, which is particularly problematic close to the boundaries between measurement categories. So in this case, a temperature that falls in the middle of the range 99 to 99 and a sixteenth degrees will give a pretty stable reading. But when that temperature approaches the boundary between the adjacent 99 and a sixteenth and 99 and an eighth readings, the readings will flicker randomly between the two. If you're using the same temperature measurement system for both ends of a range of temperatures that is only about a quarter of a degree, then you can easily end up with a lot of random flickering covering a range that's half the range of interest. Using only one such temperature sensor is not ideal, but at least this flickering affects only one side of the range's measurements, the other being calculated from the atmospheric pressure measurement, which is measured with much higher resolution. The BMP-180 has an output resolution of 0.01 millibars, which gives about 6,000 counts over our range of interest. I haven't taken this any further, but you may be minded to, in view of a potential advantage that this control system has over the festoon of temperature sensors that I use along the column to measure the length of the isothermal section. Commercial columns do not come with this festoon, and so it would have to be added which is at best inconvenient. In principle, the bottom temperature could be used as a sole control parameter, allowing a system to be built that could then assess and use any commercially available column without modification. But to do so, you would need much more precise temperature measurement. The counts number is a key parameter in electronic test equipment. Broadly, every time you add a naught to the counts, you also add a naught to the price. For example, digital multimeters costing $10 to $30 have counts of between about four and 6,000. That means full range deflection is covered by 6,000 discrete steps. A fancier meter with a count of 50,000 is likely to cost about $500, and a really high precision one with a count of over a million will cost $2,000 or more. The same relationship between counts and price is seen in digital thermometers, weighing scales, etc. The reason high count machines are so expensive is not specifically because of the number of counts, but because of the implied linearity. If you have a meter that will measure 10 volts to the nearest millivolt, that implies a count of 10,000. For that resolution to be useful, it should be accurate to the nearest millivolt, or at least a couple of millivolts. 
There's no point having 10,000 counts if it's only accurate to the nearest tenth of a volt, because the final two digits will be meaningless and misleading. So a voltmeter with a million counts not only measures a voltage from naught to a thousand to the nearest millivolt, but the nearest millivolt will be accurate. That demands far better linearity than measuring a few hundreds of millivolts to the nearest millivolt. Commercial digital temperature sensor systems are available that will measure to hundredths or even thousandths of a degree centigrade, but they are prohibitively expensive. We don't need an instrument that measures temperatures from 0 to 100 to 1 milli degree, with a corresponding count of 100,000. We only need a system that measures over a range of 1 degree, with a count of 1,000 or so, a much more modest demand. The problem is that there isn't much market for instruments of that type, and so they cannot be cheaply purchased. That means designing it from the ground up using generic parts. Actually, there is an application for this kind of low-difference, high-resolution temperature measurement, and it's found in thermal detectors for gas chromatography machines. But as you can imagine, those are not things you can buy off the shelf for a few dollars. What you can buy off the shelf for a couple of dollars are platinum resistance temperature sensors. Physically, they have the temperature responses we need. We just need the right electronics. You can wire them up as a Wheatstone bridge like this and use an inexpensive millivolt meter to measure the voltage across the bridge. I point out that there is another widely and cheaply available system that uses an exactly comparable measurement scheme to measure the difference in resistances between the strain gauges of a load cell. That is the HX711, which can be bought for a dollar or two. Anyway, if we were able to measure this A to B temperature difference with enough resolution, then that could act as a sole control parameter for the column. That's because of a continuous relationship between the column bottom alcohol content and the operating conditions. When a column is weeping, the bottom alcohol content will be high and the temperature difference large. When a column floods, the bottom alcohol content will be low and the temperature difference small and the optimal point will lie between these two. So for a specific wash flow rate, it should be possible to plot a relationship between the bottom temperature difference and the product proof. Once that relationship is plotted, an optimal point can be found and used as a control target. If I ever get this working in the future, I'll let you know. In the meantime, if you gain any experience with this kind of scheme, then please let me know.